This is Project Manager. The app is used to create items, custom items, and you place these custom items in custom containers. You can place those containers in other containers, and so on. Very similar to how files and folders work on a computer. When you download it, it's going to come blank, and it's going to look like this. Everything in it is user inputted. It's set up to organize it. That's what the app does. So let's go to the app and open it up. As you can see, I've got some information in here. This bar that's scrolling at the top is the parent container. And all these little squares down here are clickable. And it's how to navigate and how to pull up items. These are containers and items. And the image shows you where you're at. And the way it's done is each time you click it, it loads everything in that container. And that's what populates the window. So as an example, I'm in the example parent 2 parent container. I'm going to click sub 1A. I'm going to click sub 2A. I'm going to click sub 3A. Sub 4A. And here are my items. I have a regular item and a locked item. So <clears throat> these are clickable also for easy navigation. And if you want to, you can just straight up click the sub 4A to get to it quickly. But whenever you have a lot of information in here, it's going to be a whole lot easier just to, you know, go to <clears throat> your one container, your two container. And then, you know what I mean? So from the top down is going to be how you navigate this. Um, if I go to sub 1B, we can see that the same thing happens. But nothing's in here. Those items are in sub 4A, remember? There they are. Okay, so that's how this uh, home screen works. Um, let's look at an item. What does it mean to be an item? This is where you view your items. Uh, you're going to have a title at the top. You're going to have some notes. You can have your resources. These resources uh, vary. This one, however, has an image. And you can click on it and zoom in. And I'm just going to hit the little home button and go back. A locked item is if you don't want someone picking up your phone and just going through it, you can lock it. If I try to put in a fake password, it'll tell me I cannot access it. So it's an easy way to kind of hide uh, some information from, uh, you know, strangers or just whatever. Okay, so let's look at how to create these containers and items. This little button at the bottom right, we're going to click it, and this pops up, create an item in current path, or manage my containers. We're going to click manage my containers first. So this right here shows you each layer. So we're going to create a parent container called uh, video test 2. I'm going to create that, and in it, I'm going to create a sub container layer one called sub one and that's it I'm gonna click my button at the top right and go home and as you can see the newly entered video test 2 is here and my sub one here right so that's kinda how you create your containers and let's just go back here I'm gonna go back to video test 2 this pops up there's only one container in there I can create another one sub 1b and now I'm there so let's go back home there it is two different ones so it's very easy to create containers and place them in other containers so now that we have done that let's create an item now when you click create item in the current path that means it's gonna go to video test 2 for the parent and sub 1 for the layer 1 and as you see right here in the item hierarchy that's what it shows you so let's just give this title um, video title item notes video notes and the resources so this is kinda where the items get interesting right now I have three resources you can add to it we're gonna add a web link uh, we're gonna add an image we're gonna take a new image just gonna take an image of my wall, put it on there, 
and it's added on there. Okay, and we'll do the real time table here in a little bit. But let's just save this. Okay, now that item saved, and this is how it looks. Uh, you can click on the image, zoom in if you wish. Click the website, launches your browser. In case you find a good website, I mean, you can add it in your browser saved or favorites or whatever you can. But, you know, if you're a developer and you're scrolling along the internet and you see a good library, you're going to want to bookmark it or something, or you can copy and paste the link in here and create an item for it, right? So I can click copy note text and copy the notes that are in there real quick. In the top right corner, there's a little options menu where you can edit the item, delete the item, or I'm going to click path and it'll show you where you are. Where is this item located? Close. I'm going to click home. And now it's there. And these, uh, these little blocks are, you hold down on a block and it brings up a menu. So containers can't be moved or edited from here. You have to do it in the create container manager. So for example, let's just say you see this vid test parent category and there's, let's see, nothing in sub one here. I'm going to move, I'm going to go to my video test to I'm going to long click this. I'm going to move my item and I'm going to go to my parent container. It's going to be vid test and sub one. That's where I want it. And I'm going to check that. And I'm going to get this button at the top. Confirm item move. The green button is how you move an item. So you click it success. The item has been moved. So we're going to go back to vid test sub one and there is my item and we can see it's no longer here. So that's an easy way to move it. Long click it. I'm going to delete it. Yeah, I'll delete it. So now it's deleted. Um, so let's create an item. Well, we've done that. Let's see. One of the cool things about this app is you can take a picture and it will not be saved into the app. Rather, it will be saved into your phone and the app will save a link to it. So because of that, it's going to request permissions, you know, to use your camera and to write to your storage. Um, but it keeps the app lightweight. And if you take a picture with this app and it saves in your gallery and you decide to delete that item or delete the picture, it deletes out of there. If you pull an image from your gallery to the app, it will keep the image in your gallery if you delete the item. For example, we're going to go here, vid test, parent category, parent container, uh, sub one is called sub one. So let's add an item in current path and we're going to call this pick and we're going to add an image. We're going to take a new one. We're going to just take one of just the Joker. Click OK. And it's there. I'm going to save it. Uh, for some reason, LGs, you got to turn your camera sideways in order to get the picture right side up. So I just usually do that. Okay. That's the LG uh, phone company. I got the LG V30. Okay, so we're going to go to the gallery. And we're going to see that we have a project manager folder here. Now you see how that image... This is the one we just took. I'm going to go back to the app. And we are going to delete that item. Bam. Item is deleted. We're going to go back to our gallery. And the picture is deleted. So that's keeping the app <clears throat> you know, clean and your phone clean and not just filling it up with stuff. So we're going to go back to the app and we're going to create an item. We're going to call it pick again, but this time we're going to add an image from the gallery. And let's just say we're going to pick uh, one of my security camera images. Save it. Right there it is. Click it, zoom in, whatever. I go here and I delete this item. Bam, it's deleted. 
but because I pulled it from my gallery, the image will stay there. <clears throat> that way, you don't just randomly start deleting pictures off your phone if you decide to delete the album or something, or the container. Now that we've seen navigation and how items look, um, let's look at how this app can be used. If I'm a business owner, I can have a tablet and I can take a lot of the pictures from my work and I can categorize them and I can, you know, make it very useful. If I go present to a potential customer, I can pull up my project manager and I can show them, you know, okay, you want a wood fence, go to my wood container, board on board, go to board on board, how it looks. Cause the customer is going to want to a see your work and, you know, have an idea of what they're going to be getting. It can uh, really make the customer feel better about the sale. So let's just say they want to see how a board on board looks from the inside. We have an item for that. I'm going to click it. I'm going to click the picture. And here it is. How does it look on a uh, elevation change? Like how do you handle hills on a hill? Got an item for that. It's just a quick way to kind of manage data and that way you don't have to surf through your phone for pictures and stuff. If they want to see something, you got it right here from the outside. How does it look? Got it. Uh, the double gate from the outside. Got it. Inside corner. Got it. Very easy. Very easy. Okay. So let's say you're a programmer, a newer developer. For Android and you scroll across and you see many libraries and many code snippets that you want to use maybe you're not going to use them now but later on you will it's one thing you learn is you're not going to remember everything but it's carry along baggage you need to learn where to go to access it and so if you see something that you can use make an item out of it for example whenever I go use a database I'm going to go to my Android I'm going to go to SQL, SQLite, and let's say I want to learn how to create a table. I can see the, the, the query to create a table is there. Of course, in Android, it's going to be a little bit different, but this is how I know that if it gives me an error, I go to the lock at and I look at it and it displays the query, I'll, you know, be able to compare it. Or let's say I want to go to my Java and I got a code snippet that I screenshotted off of Facebook for a view and I might want to access it one day, right? So it's very, very awesome. Or maybe I see a cool library and fancy toast. So now I got a item and I got the website right here and I can just launch it real quick right there at it. So it's kind of an easy way to keep up with information. This is really good for newer developers and even experienced developers, maybe. Okay, so let's say I develop on my phone. I got an aid container. A-I-D-E, the uh, mobile development environment. Let's just say I want to add a text view into my XML. Very easy. Go to my project manager, XML, text view, hello world, basic text view. Copy note, go back to it, paste it. Bam, so quick now. But let's just say I want to add a database into this little app. I'm going to add a new Java class. I'm going to call it DB Helper. Okay. There that is. I'm going to go to my project manager. Go back home. Fresh parent. Java. Boilerplate classes. SQLite Open Helper. Got the entire class right here already. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to paste it. And I'm just going to go up here and delete from their back. And actually I'm going to change this to a lowercase h because that's what I had. And bam, just like that, I got the boilerplate for um, SQLite database. Just like that. Very quick. 
And then, of course, you can go in there and edit your column names, whatever. That's just a simple example of how the project manager can be used to quickly, you know, to help make your developing a lot quicker. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it can be used for anything, anything you want to categorize. And um, well, let's just sh let me show you something else too. I'm gonna add an item, and I'm gonna lock it. And we're gonna call this, or we're gonna give this a password of just password. And I'm gonna show you the real time table down here at the bottom, the last resource. And we're gonna give it three columns. And we're gonna give the table a name called um, accounts info. Column one, username. Column two, password hint. Maybe I don't wanna put my entire password in there. I mean, can, it's locked. But uh, I would put the hint in. Column three, uh, provider. And we're just going to give this item the title of <clears throat> my accounts. And we're going to save this. And that's what you do there in the create an item. You just create it. And if you don't put all the fields in for the data table, it won't carry over. So if you pick two columns, be sure to fill out a table name in both column names. Otherwise, it won't carry over. But when you go to view this, okay, resuming. So if we go to this item, I'm going to enter the password. Access. Okay, there it is. We click it. Go to real time table, accounts info. And this is how it looks, kind of like the other screen. These are for sorting. So let's just click this button at the bottom right. Username. Let's just put user one password hint uh, K nine R. Maybe that'll help me remember what my password is. Provider Hulu. Not Hulu. I'm gonna add that entry. Mm, do another one. Password hint K eight R. Maybe I'll change this one. You know what? Maybe because they always make us do special characters. Maybe I got an asterisk in it. Provider Netflix. I'm going to add the entry. I'm going to click this button at the top right. Edit column names and appearance. Here's where you can change the different things. Okay. Username. Default. I'm going to make it blue. Password. I'm going to make the size of that text small. Color. going to be red. Provider. Large. And we're going to make it green. going to commit the changes. I'm going to go back. And it's just a very simple way to organize data. Maybe you'll put in people's names. Maybe you'll put in the uh, addresses for people or information about people. And whenever you click any of these, it sorts it. So right now we're sorting by username ascending. If we just sort by descending, it's going to descend it. Password hint. Ascending, descending, same thing. Provider. Ascending H becomes for yeah, right. So that's just a very quick way to do it. And we're just gonna exit the table. That's it. Organize anything you want to.